Hi there, Alison here with another Cab Franc du Jour. Today we are in Bourgogne and we're looking at the Catherine and Pierre Breton 2018 Clos and Echelle Bourgogne. The Breton family lineage in Bourgogne dates back five generations, but the modern story of the estate begins in the mid 1980s when the family began vinifying their own grapes as opposed to selling their fruit to the local cooperative, which of course was a very common practice during this time. They started using organic viticultural practices in 1991 and then transitioned into biodynamic viticulture in 1994. Today, the family has vineyards in both Bogoy as well as Vouvray, which is where Catherine's family is from. And in Bogoy, they have around 12 hectares of Cabernet Franc vines, and their vineyard parcels are dotted across three communes in the Appalachian, Restigny, Benet, and Bogoy. Now, Clos Saint-Charles is one of two top wines, top vin de garde or vin de terroir that the estate makes. The other is Les Perrières, which is a fine lieu de located in the commune of Bogoy, and Clos Saint-Charles is located in the commune of Benet. Now, just as a quick recap of the Bogoy AOP, there are seven communes that make up the appellation, and there are three distinct groups of soils we find here. First, we have the uh, recent alluvial soils. These are the soils that hug the north bank of the Loire River, and these are deep, sandy, silty soils. Then we have the ancient alluvial soils that are set a little bit further away. They're about two kilometers north of the Loire River, specifically in the communes of Bogoy and Restigny. Uh, and these soils are deep, sandy, gravelly soils, and they sit atop the lower Turonian tufo bedrock. Finally, we have the soils of the slopes, the Côte, uh, and these are set further back away from the Loire River, and this is where we find a strong influence of the Turonian Tufo chalk bedrock. Now, the commune of Benet is unique in the Appalachian in that all of its vineyards are exclusively on the Côte, so on the slopes, so there are no alluvial soils in Benet. Uh, rather, all of the vineyards have the influence of either the lower, middle, or the upper Turonian Tufo chalk, depending on where the vineyards are located in the commune. Now, in terms of the topography, it is quite varied. In the western part of the commune, we have this, the Changeon River, which runs north to south, uh, and this river separates the commune of Benet from the commune of Bogoy to the west. And then in the northeast, we have the Benet Forest. And these two geographical features really help to uh, define the exposures of the slopes in the commune. So in the western part of the commune, the slopes actually tend to face a bit more southwest, facing the Changeon River. Uh, and then the slopes continue in this arc shape, following the Benet Forest. And in the center of the commune, the slopes tend to be a bit more south-facing. Uh, and then in the eastern part of the commune, the slopes actually face a little bit more uh, south-southeast. Now, in terms of the bedrock, as I mentioned, uh, we do have the lower, middle, and upper Tronian Tufo chalks, and depending on where your vineyards are uh, in terms of the altitude, will generally give you uh, what your bedrock influence is. So from about 30 to around 50 meters above sea level, we have the lower Tronian Tufo chalk. And then from about 50 to around 70 meters above sea level, we have the influence of the middle Turonian white tufo chalk. Uh, and then finally, uh, starting at about 70 meters is where we find the influence of the upper Turonian yellow tufo chalk. And I mentioned these tufo chalks because they do all have different properties uh, in terms of their density, uh, their water holding capacity, as well as their mineral content, which will uh, inevitably impact uh, viticulture in terms of yields as well as vigor. Now, Clos Saint-Echal as a lieu de, it's around eight and a half hectares, uh, and we're situated here in the very far eastern part of the Benet commune, right at the border of where Benet meets the Restigny commune. Now, we're on a gentle south-southeast facing slope, and the altitudes range from about, I would say, 452 or so meters above sea level up to about 70 meters above sea level at the top of the slope. And we have the influence here of the middle Turonian white tufo chalk. Uh, this is known locally as the tufo de bourre. It's a soft, white, micaceous chalk. And this is the chalk that was used widely uh, throughout the Loire in terms of when they were building uh, the chateau that of course makes the region quite famous. Now, this vineyard does have a lot of historical significance. So it is believed that it was once owned by the Comtesse Fitzjames, who was a noblewoman who served in the court of Marie Antoinette. 
Now, Catherine and Pia Breton have one hectare here, and this parcel has been in their family since 1892. Uh, their vines are situated mid-slope, and they're around 70 years of age, and there's only around 30 centimeters of topsoil here. It's a predominantly clay topsoil uh, before we hit that middle Turonian tufo bedrock. Now, from a winemaking perspective, all the fruit was hand harvested and it was destemmed. And fermentation takes place with indigenous yeast in a large open top wooden fermenters. It spends about three weeks on skins, and there is, uh, they don't do much as far as aggressive extractive techniques, uh, just a, a few, you know, pump overs here to kind of keep the cap wet. Uh, and then élevage takes place in Foudre, and it rests there for about 18 months before uh, bottling. Uh, and this vineyard naturally yields on the lower side, around 35 or so hectoliters per hectare. Uh, so the production of this wine annually is only around 5,000 bottles per year. Of course, that depends on the vintage, but uh, generally speaking, it's a pretty, pretty uh, low volume uh, wine for the estate. Now, the other thing I want to mention quickly uh, is that Bene, as a commune, because of where it is situated, we're tucked back away from the river influence, away from the moderating influence of the Loire, and we have all these vineyards are on the slopes with that strong Turonian Tufo chalk influence. The wines from Bene are known to be the most structured and tannic of all the wines uh, coming from the Bagoy Appellation. So let's dive into this wine. Ah, the nose is finally starting to open up a little bit. I have had this wine open for a few hours uh, because uh, it is a younger wine. You know, this is a Van de Garde, so I did want to give it some oxygen so that it could really kind of show uh, its true colors, at least as far as uh, where it's currently at in its uh, stage of life. And the fruits lean a little bit more on the darker side, darker, a bit more savory, a bit more wild. And I'm getting a little bit of like a black cherry note, a red, like a dark red cherry note. Uh, there's a bit of like a wild black raspberry note here as well. And the pyrazines, I would say they're kind of leaning a little bit forward. They're still in balance with the fruit, but this wine is definitely more savory or more earthy. And they, I love the profile of the pyrazines. It's kind of herbal, a bit of sage, a bit of rosemary, and there's also a little evergreen thing going on but it's not cedar, it's more like fir or spruce or something like that, but there is an ele evergreen element to this wine. And there is a floral perfume to this wine as well. It's not super aromatic per se, but there is like this tucked up in like underneath, there is this very gentle kind of almost potpourri like perfume, like dried uh, mixed flowers almost. Mm. Now, on the palate, those fruits actually come through a bit more, a bit more crunchy, um, a bit more like a black currant note, maybe even a bit of cranberry here. Uh, and the acidity is really vivacious, very energetic, and almost, almost a little, a little crunchy, if you will. Uh, but I do like the fruit profile on the palate, that mix of crunchy fruits as well as the dark fruits. And there is a spiciness to the palate, a bit of clove. Bit of um, bit of allspice, maybe even a touch of black pepper here too, and then on the finish, there is a very distinctive crushed rock thing happening on the finish, which I really quite quite like. Uh, and there's also a touch of leather uh, on the finish as well. But there's a there's a lot of layers here for sure. But really, what is important to note about this wine is the structure. Um, so, as I mentioned, this is a Van de Garde. This is a wine that was intended for longer term aging. So there is a decent amount of tannin here. And the tannins are particular. Uh, they're firm uh, and they are, how would I say, um, there's a lot of tannin here. They're at a moderate level, but they do fill the mouth. And there is a kind of a chew to them or a meatiness to the, the tannin texture. I can almost visualize uh, the small Cabernet Franc berries and like a, a high skin to juice ratio uh, in terms of the tannins and how they feel. As if I just popped a grape in my mouth and I can feel the texture of the tannins uh, on my tongue. Uh, so it's very, very distinctive in that way. The wine, I would say, is definitely not full-bodied. It's more medium-bodied. There is restraint here. There is some elegance. Uh, it's very focused, and I think that tufo chalk is really coming through here and how it sits on the palate. Um, you know, it's not super fresh, fleshy, as I said. It's more lean, more svelte in terms of uh, its profile. But this is, you know, this is a Van de Garde, as I, as I said. 
uh, there's persistence here, there is structure, there's uh, some degree of intensity that really makes this wine good for longer term aging. Um, if you have this in your cellar, I would definitely recommend holding it for at least five years maybe uh, to give it that time that it needs for those tannins to really soften. If you're impatient, which I would totally understand if you were, uh, definitely decant this one uh, for a couple of hours to give it that time to breathe. And perhaps I would suggest serving this with a piece of protein on the side to really help work through some of those young uh, tannins uh, where this wine is currently at. But really, it's very energetic, very alive, kinetic, resonant. Uh, it's just, it's an exceptional wine, and it's an exceptional example of age-worthy Bourgogne, and a great example from uh, the Benet commune in particular. If you've had this wine before, or if you have another favorite wine from Catherine and Pierre Breton, do let me know what it is in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will be back again soon with another wine. Cheers.